Welcome to the Grants Portal How-To Video Series, presented by FEMA's Training Design and Development section. In this video, we will walk through how to submit an applicant-developed scope of work and cost in Grants Portal. As an applicant, you have the option of developing the scope of work and cost for your projects on your own, instead of having FEMA staff complete this section of the application on your behalf. If you are interested in doing so, you need to talk to your Program Delivery Manager, or PDMG. There are multiple ways you can locate the project you want to work on in Grants Portal. We will walk through two of them. If you have a project ready to develop the scope of work and cost, you should have a task indicated by a number next to the bell in the upper right corner of the page. Clicking on this task bell will take you to a list of incomplete tasks. Here, one of our tasks has the type Applicant Completes Scope and Cost, with more specific details about the task provided in the description. To reach the project page for this project from here, you can click the Review button on the left side of the entry. You can also navigate to the project using the navigation pane. Under My Organization, select Projects. This takes you to a page with a list of all of your projects for all of the events or disasters that you are involved in. Look for a project with the process step, Pending Scope and Cost Completion by Applicant. To reach the project page from here, click on the magnifying glass on the left side of the entry. On the project page, scroll down to find Scope and Cost Summary, and click on the header to view the scope and cost. There are two tabs you can view in this area, Scope and Cost. Nothing has been entered for these yet. Click on the Complete Scope and Cost button in the Scope and Cost Summary header to begin entering these details. On the Manage Scope and Cost page, you will see a drop-down menu listing each damage included in the project and tabs for Damage Description and Dimensions, or DDD, Scope, cost, and documents. You may find it helpful to reference documents in the Documents tab while you complete the scope and cost. Make sure that your scope and costs match the items and dollar amounts provided in your documentation. The selected damages scope and cost are not complete, as indicated both in the drop-down menu by these gray scope and cost badges, and in the upper right corner of the page, next to the Go Back button, where it reads Damage Incomplete. Let's complete the scope for this damage. To add the scope details, click on Add Scope below the damage header. Enter the scope by typing directly into this field, or copy and paste from another source. Be descriptive and clear about the work that you are including in your project. This should include any work that you have completed or will complete for the selected damage. Anything you include here should be supported with documentation that you upload to Grants Portal. When you are done entering the scope, click the Save Scope button. To complete the scope for submission, click the Complete and Lock button on the right side of the page. After completing and locking the scope, you will still be able to modify the information using the Unlock for Rework button until you submit the project to FEMA. Next, we will provide cost details. Costs are broken into four sections. You will only provide costs for the work associated with the damage that is currently selected. This damage only includes a work to be completed permanent item. Click on Add Cost on the right side of the header for the type of cost you want to add. There are specific cost types you should select for work completed and for work to be completed. For work to be completed items, you will use either applicant provided costs or contract vendor costs. For applicant provided costs, make sure you have attached documentation to your project that summarizes your projected costs. Use contract vendor costs if you are able to provide a contract, quote, or bid from your contractor or vendor in your attached documents. This project is being completed using contracts only. We will select Contract Vendor Costs for this damage. When you select the cost type, a dialog box will pop up, prompting you for details about the cost item you are adding. Select a cost code from the drop-down menu 
indicating the type of cost. We are adding a cost for a contract. Provide a description of the cost item. You can type directly into this field or copy and paste from another source. Designate a quantity and unit type. For applicants developing their own scope of work and cost, this will always be a lump sum of one. Enter one in the quantity field. The unit will default to lump sum. You will not have to make any changes to this field. Provide a unit price for the cost you are adding. For applicants developing their own scope of work and cost, leave the city adjustment factor as its default of one. When all of the fields have been completed, the total cost will be displayed near the bottom of the dialog box. Click the Save button to save the cost item details. Grants Portal calculates the total cost of the project based on the information you provide on this page. It factors in any hazard mitigation costs and insurance reductions you provide, and it will calculate the federal and non-federal cost shares. You may need to refresh the browser for these totals to update after you've added the costs. You can view the cost items you've added so far by clicking on the header for the type of cost item. You can use the Options menu on the left side of each entry to make edits or remove the cost. Once you've added all of the costs associated with the selected damage, click Complete and Lock to save your costs. You can still make edits if necessary using the Unlock for Rework button. In the upper right corner of the page, next to the Go Back button, it now reads Damage Complete. The Damage menu now indicates the scope and cost are complete for this damage. You will complete a scope of work and cost for each of the damages included in the project. In this case, our second damage also includes a badge for intended scope. For this damage, you will need to populate both a scope to restore to pre-disaster condition and an intended scope. For the sake of an applicant-developed scope of work and cost, you can use the same information for both of these. Remember to be brief but descriptive and provide all of the documentation necessary to support your scope and costs. Click Complete and Lock to complete the scope. For costs, our second damage includes both work completed permanent items and work to be completed permanent items. For work completed, where all work associated with the cost item is complete and fully documented, use the type FEMA cost codes. Provide the same types of information in this dialog box as you did before. For this damage, we are also adding a work to be completed permanent items cost. We will select contract vendor costs for this damage. Remember to click Complete and Lock when you are finished entering all of your costs. You can confirm that the scope and cost have both been completed and locked in the Damages drop-down menu. All of the badges for all of our damages are now green, indicating they are complete. At any time before or after completing the scope and cost, you can click Go Back in the upper right corner of the page to return to the project page where you can view and submit the scope and cost. The scope and cost summary area of the project page will be updated with the information we provided. If present, the final scope area will be completed later during closeout. The cost tab will display totals using all of the costs you provided for all of the damages included in the project. If you are unable to complete the development of the scope and cost yourself, you can request FEMA to complete it for you by clicking the Request FEMA Completion button in the Scope and Cost Summary area or at the top of the page. When you have completed the scope and cost for all damages included in the project, you will be able to submit the project to FEMA by clicking Submit for Validation at the top of the page. This will open a pop-up confirming that you want to submit the project's scope and cost to FEMA for validation. After you select Yes, you can view your responses from the project page, but you cannot make any further edits. Please be aware that if you are working with any documents used for a FEMA grant, you are responsible for safeguarding personally identifiable information, or PII. 
PII refers to anything that can be used to directly or indirectly identify an individual. Some examples of sensitive PII are addresses, social security numbers, and financial account information. This type of information must not be uploaded into Grants Portal or Grants Manager. To report corruption, waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and or misconduct, contact the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General by phone at 1-800-323-8603 or via the website or mailing address listed on the screen. Procurement requirements are among the most complicated parts of the PA grant process, and non-compliance can result in deobligation of funds. Please make sure that you are following FEMA's procurement guidance for recipients and subrecipients. The Procurement Disaster Assistance Team, or PDAT, offers some training and tools on their website. Federal requirements for procurement and contracting are described in 2 CFR Part 200. For technical assistance with Grants Portal or Grants Manager, you can call the PA Grants Portal Grants Manager hotline at 866-337-8448. National hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. The hotline can also be reached by email at fema-recovery-pa-grants at fema.dhs.gov. We have many recorded webinars and tutorial videos available on our YouTube channel. You can find them by searching YouTube for FEMA Grants Portal or via the Support Center in Grants Portal or Grants Manager.